Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here. I am back again today doing another video and the subject of today's video is on the Minnesota Timberwolves, specifically trade scenarios that the Timberwolves can make to improve their team. I am a long-standing Minnesota Timberwolves fan. We are a team that suffers a lot. We are rarely ever good in my lifetime as a Timberwolves fan, which, um, you know, I started probably watching them when I was around 10. And so that's around 2007. So in that time frame, they've only made the playoffs once. Um, and I think that they're just a team that right now, you know, they're coming off of a, being in the playoffs two years ago. They've really got no direction as a team. They they traded away one of their best players in Butler. And they got like an okay return for him. But even that already is kind of broken down. They got Saric and Covington and Saric is already gone. And I just feel like they're really directionless and a trade might be able to uh, change things up and help them find more direction and at least move towards something rather than just being stuck in the middle like they seem to be right now. Uh, with that, I am going to uh, get going here with some of the trade room, uh, some of the trade suggestions that I had set up uh, and we'll go from there. All right. So to start off with number the first trade I have, number one, it's a trade between the Warriors and the Timberwolves. I have the Timberwolves getting D'Angelo Russell, Draymond Green, and Eric Paschal for Carl Anthony Towns and Alan Crabb. This may be the biggest trade, as in the Timberwolves are giving up their best player, uh, and the Warriors are giving up a lot, too. The Warriors are giving up two All-Stars in this trade. And so why does it work for each team? Well, for the Timberwolves, they've been craving a All-Star point guard for a while now. They would spill that need in D'Angelo Russell. Uh, they also get Draymond Green, who's a, a, a good power forward, not really All-Star caliber anymore, but still a good power forward. And then Eric Paschal, who's been a really good young player so far. Uh, this year he's averaging 14 points a game on decent efficiencies. And so all in all, the Wolves basically are trading three, uh, one star player for three solid, uh, potentially all-star caliber players here. And what are they giving the Warriors? They're giving them $20 in expiring money in Allen Crab. So that's $20 million the Warriors can go out and use however they want. And then they're also giving them Carl Anthony Towns, who's one of the best young players in the game. But I think the thing to keep in mind here is that the Warriors, are they giving up a lot? Yeah. And are they getting a lot? Yeah. So I don't think that the Warriors are making out in the night here and like jibbing the Wolves for Towns. I think that they're giving up quite a bit in order to get them. They're giving up two All-Stars and what will probably end up being like their sixth man in order to get Towns. So I think it's a pretty fair trade. Next, I have another trade between the Warriors and Timberwolves. This one does not involve Carl Anthony Towns. This one is D'Angelo Russell to the Wolves in exchange for their 2020 first round pick, Robert Covington and Alan Crabb. So why would the Wolves do this trade? Pretty simple. They really want to form a big three with Russell, Wiggins, and Towns. And beyond that... Um, they, they they really wanted to make the trade to get Alan Crabb to flip him for something or to be able to use him in a trade somehow because he's expiring $20 million, uh, and that's really useful on the market for trades. Why would the Warriors do this trade? They get a first-round pick to help supplement their aging stars. They get – and that first-round pick will be pretty good too, probably at least top 10 considering how the bad the Wolves are this year. Uh, beyond that, they get Robert Covington, who is a really good wing player and can pretty much replace what Andre Iguodala slash Harrison Barnes had been giving you for like the last five years. Uh, and then lastly, you get Alan Crabb, who's an expiring $20 million, and you can use that $20 million in free agency this upcoming offseason. So basically, you're getting a lot of supporting pieces for D'Angelo Russell, but at this point, you don't really need like another star point guard who has to handle the ball a lot when you already got Steph. The third trade I have is between the Timberwolves and the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, the, let's see here. The Timberwolves would be sending Covington, Jarrett Culver, and Alan Crabb to the Trailblazers in exchange for C.J. McCollum. 
So why would the Wolves do this trade? Well, they're getting the best player back in the trade in McCollum. This year he's averaging 22 points a game, four rebounds, four assists. He can be a, a really good like second or third option depending on how the Wolves want to play him. Not a very good defender, but he would really help them on offense. Uh, and as for why the Blazers would do this, basically they just get a lot more depth. I feel like the Blazers' problem over like the last four years during the C.J. McCollum, Damian Lillard era has been a lack of wing depth, and they definitely help replenish that. Robert Covington could start could come in and start right away at small forward. You could even start Culver right away at small forward. He hasn't been putrid this year. He's shooting like 42% from the field, and he's scoring like 10 points a game. So I feel like that's decent numbers. Um, and, you know, they could spike up if he were on the Blazers too, depending on playing time. Beyond that, you get the Alan Crabb, who will be a free agent in the offseason, and you're basically getting $20 million back to spend on free agency. So you're basically trading McCollum for Covington, Culver, and $20 million, which I think is uh, a decent deal in my opinion. Next, I have probably the most outlandish and far-fetched trade here, and the one I would say would be definitely least likely to happen. It's between the Timberwolves and the Spurs. So first, I'll start off with the Spurs are giving the Timberwolves DeRozan and Aldridge, uh, and the Timberwolves are giving the uh, Spurs their 2020 first-round pick, their 2022 first-round pick. They're giving them Alan Crabb, Gorgie Jang, Robert Covington, and Jarrett Culver. So first off, the easy part, why would the Timberwolves do this trade? I feel like they're a team that actually, despite always saying like we're a youth movement, we're trying to be a young, flourishing team, they're in they're in win now mode more than they let on. And this team, you know, if they don't become a contender within a year or two, Carl Anthony Towns is gonna be out of here. Um with that being said, I can see them trading for DeRozan and Aldridge, basically doing a do-over of the Jimmy Butler trade. Those guys combined are scoring like 41 points a game, getting like 13 rebounds a game and 7 assists a game. So that's pretty good to supplement uh, Wiggins and Towns. And then why would the Spurs do this trade? Well, they're getting two first-round picks, and the Timberwolves pick for this year will be pretty good. Uh, potentially top five even. And the 2022 pick, you know, it might be lower, but it'd still be a first-round pick, which is valuable in the NBA. Besides that, you're getting Alan Crabb's contract, which is an expiring $20 million, so you'll get that in free agency to spend this year. Uh, you're getting Robert Covington, who's a really solid wing defender, and I think a guy that would fit really well in the Spurs system of being a 3 and D guy who works really hard, not flashy, but plays really well. Jarrett Culver is a really nice young piece who you can put in a backcourt with Derek White and uh, DeJounte Murray. And Jarrett Culver could either start or kind of be like the sixth man. And you could have a three-headed monster of a backcourt there. Um, and let me remind you, I think Jarrett Culver is like 23 and Derek White's like um, 24. And I think DeJounte is also 24. So you'd have a really nice young crop of, of guys there. Uh, and then Gorgie Jang would really just be to match salary, but even he, after next year, his contract is gone. So I think if you're the Spurs, you're kind of a middling team right now. You know, it's kind of like their best case scenario is like being the eight seed and like maybe winning a game versus the Lakers. Like that's their upside. Or like last year when they faced the Nuggets and pushed them to seven but lost in the first round. I think that's the ceiling for this team. And so in my opinion, why keep turning the wheels to make no progress? Might as well make a big move, get a lot of pieces to rebuild. And, you know, between the $20 million of free agency, two first-round picks, Covington and Culver, that's pretty good return for two all-stars who are both in probably, well, you know, uh, Aldridge, he's like 33, and DeRozan's like 31. That's pretty good return for two all-stars who are fading out of their primes pretty fast. And the last trade I have here is between the Timberwolves and the Wizards. I have the Wizards giving up Bradley Beal and Ish Smith, and I have the Timberwolves giving up a 2020 first-round pick, a 2022 first-round pick, and then the, the typical trio of Culver, Covington, and Crabb. 
So why do the Timberwolves do this trade? They solidify a really good second option to Towns. Um, Wiggins can take on a more, a more, I'd say more natural third option role. Uh, they replace Jeff T with a, just a platoon starting point guard of Ish Smith. Um, I feel like they're a much bigger threat with a third option. This is a team that really feels like it needs a third option to be a contender. On the flip side, the Wizards, why do they do this trade? They get a lot of rebuilding pieces. And let's be real, even with Bradley Beal in the lineup, this team's upside is like 35 wins and their downside is like 15. Um, I think this just gives them a nice clean slate and a nice way of rebuilding. You get two first round picks. The Wolves this year will at least be top 10. And in two years, I think could still be a decent pick, probably like middle of the pack. Jerry Culver's a 23-year-old promising guard who could even step in and start right now in place of Beal. Covington can be your starting small forward. And Alan Crabb is $20 million in free agency. And that concludes the five trades I have, guys. I know it's probably not the usual uh like blockbuster every team has a clear win but i think they every team does benefit in these scenarios and i think uh, you got to remember that gms like an expiring contract is a hot commodity in the nba d- these days and besides that i think um first round picks especially for teams that are looking to be on the verge of rebuilds first round picks are very valuable like look at okc they collected like nine first round picks in the trades they made this off season uh, besides that uh, Culver's a really young, promising player, and Covington is a really good wing defender who was, uh, if not for injury, going to be all defensive first team last year. So there you have it, guys. Those are my trade scenarios for the Wolves. Comment below if you have any thoughts or trade suggestions of your own, and have a good day. Bye.